Greetings there, this is Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth and you are watching Metal Shop TV. Yeah. I think that was before we got fussy. Um, they generally um, stand the test of time because they're songs that have been written over a long period. You always have a difficult second album. Uh, we had a difficult second album, not because of the writing, it's because our band fragmented into two halves, split in half, and uh, we, would, we took our record company to court. So our second album became our third album if that made any sense. So long story, I won't bore you with the details. But um, yeah, I think our first album we recorded in like three weeks or something. So yeah, relatively quick. We were, you know, fresh under the clock, uh, new to it. So we weren't, you know, we weren't exactly professional in our delivery, but I think it stands the test of time. It doesn't sound fabulous, but at the time, everybody was like, whoa, this is a good production for a black metal band. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy it still. Uh, yeah, but it was slow. I always meet people that are like, oh yes, I bought your first album when it came out on the day. And I was like, yeah, along with the other 65,000. Um, and it wasn't like that at all. It was a very slow process. Um, back then it wasn't, it was a case of, um, gigging and tape trading, which meant actually posting a letter with a tape in to people in exchange for other tapes and flyers. And uh, basically that was how your band got known. No, tantamount to ca sending carrier pigeons. It was, it was almost like that. Um, but it, I guess it added a little bit more mystery and mysticism to the proceedings. I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> I've long, long given up caring. And also a lot of these people I, you know, are like half my age. And they're thinking, okay, we can judge us how you want, but you know, you don't even remember some of these bands, you know? I was like pen paling with Euronymous when they were like not even born. I find it, actually, when I found out yesterday, because uh, I should have known, I know this year obviously is the 30th anniversary of the principal, even my flesh. But my girlfriend texted me and I, I said, she said, congratulations on the uh, anniversary of your debut album. Do realise it came out the same year I was born. <laughs> no, it's, I was like, oh my God, yeah. And that would have been a weird thing to have come up against if somebody said, you do realise a new album's just been released and your girlfriend's just been born, your future girlfriend, obviously. I'd find that a bit weird, but anyway. The recording process is completely different, yeah. It's a bit more, it's like the, the further you progress in a career, some of the things become um, more self-explanatory. You always approach things with an air of, well, I've done this before, this is a better way to do it. And the same applies to recording albums. Um, we kind of wandered into the first album not by mistake, we chose the studio primarily because we were massive fans at the time of Paradise Lost, Anathema, My Dying Bride, and all these bands are recorded at a place called the Academy Studios in West Yorkshire, a place called Dewsbury. In fact, Peaceful Records was only a stone's throw from the studio, and our later bass player, Dave Pybus, who didn't join until 2002, worked there and we went there to primarily get some free CDs and he told us to fuck off. And when he joined the band, I pointed that out to him. Look. <laughs> but no, we, we, we went to this studio, yeah, uh, primarily because we were massive fans and I guess of Anathema, My Dying Bride and that sort of British uh, goth metal culture. And I think a lot of that bled 
into what we were doing as well, which had this air of gothic romanticism, vampirism, um, very literal. Well, I think it will always be um, connected in some respect because of the nature of how it was recorded. It was a great time. I, I loved the first year of lockdown because um, uh, the drums had been recorded, nothing else. So they just, the guitarist and the bass player sent demo sort of guide tracks so I could record. And we could only really work five hours a day. And uh, my studio with my producers, like about 15 miles out in the countryside. And I just bought this cool new car. And every day I used to drive it past my town and then come back through the town because it was like something from 28 days later, you know, it was ghost town, Silent Hill. And uh, every day I was like, this is so cool. Um, yeah, and they were doing mandatory road stops and stuff. So it was only me and him could work in the studio. Could only do like five hours. Uh, but the weather was beautiful. It was really hot. And uh, yeah, we just like, we didn't have a record company breathing down our neck. We didn't have, management were like, well, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, we didn't create this pandemic. So we just kind of just drifted through summer. And it was, a, it was an amazing experience. The second year of lockdown was shit for me because it was, I was bored by then. But um, yeah, and obviously we had to hold the album off. No point releasing it during the pandemic because you can't tour it. We actually got to tour America at the, the, the end of the pandemic and we're doing meet and greets with full masks and everything. So he couldn't even recognise it. It was so weird. Um, and we managed to dodge the virus all the way across America, but both our support bands contracted it. Um, so there was one occasion in New York where the whole like the audience had to wait around about three hours before we went on stage. It's kind of strange, but needs must when the devil drives and all that. Well, he was a fan of Cradle. And I think this is the thing, it's like with the Ed Sheeran thing as well. They've been fans of the band and they want to get involved. And um, it was more about the video than the actual song, I guess. Although I have sung the song with them on the stage at this All Points East. It was a big, they headlined it. It was, a, it was fantastic, actually. It was a huge, huge experience. Um, but my daughter was a massive fan of Bring Me The Horizon. And Ollie has promised her since that any concert, any concert anywhere in the world, she can go for free. And recently they played uh, the, um, the London O2. And so she got a box, you know, royal treatment pretty much. But she's in the video as well, because I took her up to meet Ollie and see the place. It was like a dream day. And uh, people think that that video was like really well planned and it wasn't. We literally just took, went to a live supermarket with people in there and uh, did all this, we did loads of film, way more than that, really stupid stuff as well, like um, taking over the, the bakery, you know, and actually serving customers, but I didn't make it into the video. But my daughter's in the video, while I'm shopping, you see her in the background, tending to look for sugar. But yeah, it was good fun. I know, but the thing is, he is obviously one of the biggest artists in the world. Very humble. When he came to the studio, it was just him, no, no security, just him with his guitar, Cradle of Filth hoodie. Then we took him to a pub for some lunch because he was hungry. I had a good day. Um, and the song's been done now for about a year and two months. It was done just before Christmas. 2022 and the reason for the delay is because we had plans for it and then his management said well he's taking he's releasing a record can't do it now he's doing this can't do it now so we've got a, a plan for it. it's going to actually go on our new record which is due out at the end of this year um, and people will be surprised by it because it does sound like a tune and it does sound like cradle of filth and uh it's got a blast beat it's it's, it's more of a it's cradle of filth with ed sheeran 
but he plays guitar and he, he sings like Ed Sheeran as well. Well, Martin's obviously been very important because he's been a member of the band now since Godspeed and the Devil's Thunder, which was 2008. So, well, he's been in the band 15 years, 16 years this year. So obviously he's had an integral part to the band. He also has done a lot of orchestration on some of the albums. Um, Ashok joined when we had our, like, epiphany. Um, There's a strange moment where we were due to go on tour in Europe, co-headlining with Behemoth. And one of our guitarists had migrated to the US and was too busy doing whatever he was doing. Um, and he wasn't interested. He said, no, who would be him off? I don't want to come on tour with those. And we're like, okay, that's weird. Um, and the second guitarist that we had, which was only a live guitarist, he fucked his neck up and he had to have uh, operations so he couldn't play guitar at all. So we either canceled or looked for replacements. We found two great replacements in Ashok and Richard Shaw and uh, didn't look back. We were like, well, when our other guitarist then contacted us and said, see you finished the tour, should we start writing a new record? And we're like, we have started writing a new record, goodbye. Um, so yeah, they were both, they've both been very integral to the band. Anybody who joins Cradle of Filth are not secondary to, to anybody else. It's always a, a very collaborative affair. Yeah, we, well, we played some great festivals here. Um, always great festivals. Brutal Assault, uh, Masters of Rock, is it? Um, and there was another one in a forest. I remember the one in the forest, which was very, uh, very fairy tale like And it was a very mixed, very mixed uh, audience, very mixed lot of bands. I think we had like a ska band after us and some... Really cool. What I remember about that was that we stayed in this ski lodge and in the afternoon we decided we wanted to go up the mountain. And when we got to the top, there was a massive thunderstorm. We were like stuck inside the cloud. There was like lightning going off all around us so we couldn't get back down to the... We were like, fuck, I wonder how long this is going to last. We've got a gig tonight. It lasted about an hour. It was pretty cool. Um, and we made the gig. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just loads of... Uh, Good memories of the Czech Republic. Yeah. Yeah, I was shitting myself. It was at a place called the Albion Mills, which is a pub in the town which I live in, England, which is called Ipswich. I still live there for my sins. I haven't found the train station, that's why. Um, the pub is no longer there, it's destroyed. Um, nothing to do with us, though. Uh, there was, must have been 20 people. It was us. It wasn't Cradle of Filth, it was a band called PDA. It was my punk band. And a band called Edible Vomit as well. And it was mainly friends and girlfriends. And, but it was cool, you know? You have to start somewhere. I can't remember the first proper Cradle of Filth gig. Probably another pub gig, I think. Yeah, low key back then. Oh, uh, astronaut, uh, fireman, racing car, Formula One driver. I'd, be, I'd definitely be driving for Ferrari, no doubt about it. Uh, no, I'd probably be, I don't know what I'd be doing, to be honest. I, I, I tried my hand at journalism. Thankfully, that failed. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never had a proper job. I had lots of little jobs, like... Uh, paper rounds and uh, working at a Chinese restaurant and a bakery and all, you know, all the little things you do as a teenager. But um, I'm ashamed, well, not ashamed, I'm actually proud to admit that I've never had a proper job. I've always been uh, this and it um, doesn't look like I'm going to get any, <laughs> get any better. Um, I might write a book. Well, I'm considering writing a book. I've got a poetry book that I've been trying to release for fucking, well, I haven't finished, but... Should all else fail, then I think that's the territory I'll probably end up in.